Now I want to particularly concentrate on the cons of the cars. So the five things I don't like about the cars, I really want to dig deep and look into the different details and why I don't like those particular features of the car. A lot of the car reviews shows you the pros and all the fun stuff of the car that's all great, but you don't really dig into the details of the cons, maybe because they're being paid to review them. I, I don't know. I'm not accusing them. I'm not saying anything, no comment on that. But I wanted to give you my honest and fair review of the car, which includes the cons of the car. Number one, the looks. Acura has dramatically changed the styling from the third generation to the fourth generation TLs. It's much, much more aggressive and there's a lot of sharp lines, and especially the number one thing that people complain about is that grill, that Acura grill. There's, there's no other way to describe it. In the front of the car, especially the model years 20, 2009 to 2011, there's a huge chrome thing that comes out, and that's what they call the grill, and it literally looks like a giant beak. Now, from 2012 to 2014, they refined that, made it a little bit more subtle, but retained the um, Acura look. A subtle thing I picked up on was the puddle lights. Now, these are the lights that when you open a door, it shines down to the ground so you know what you're stepping on. Those are pretty dim. It's actually pretty ridiculously dim because when you open a door, even at night, it's so dim that I just replaced the lights. I actually replaced them with the Acura logos that I bought off from Amazon. And uh, so those give them a totally new look. The rear doors, however, there's actually no lights there at all. So I feel as a luxury car, it should have at least better looking lights and more functional lights as well. And while we're talking about lighting, I think one thing that Acura could have done better was to have the turn signals be all LEDs. Currently, only the mirrors have the LED turn signals and the rest of them are the regular traditional incandescent bulbs. I think that the LED lights will be brighter, it'll look better, and it'll last longer. Number two, gas mileage. Now, I knew this getting in the car, so it wasn't a big surprise to me, but 1725, that's pretty pathetic, especially since you have all-wheel drive cars that are getting 30 miles a gallon today. Um, I guess Acura was using an older design, cars heavy, things weren't as efficient. I mean, there's decent power, but it eats gas. <laughs> Number three, luxury technology shortcomings. I actually have a list here uh, on my phone, so I'm going to start reading it off a little bit, but I think... There's some nice to have technologies that should be part of this, uh, this car, but I, Acura didn't include it for one reason or another. So, first thing, I think that Acura should have combined the advanced package with the technology package. And if you're not familiar with the advanced package, the advanced package allows you to have the blind spot warning detection. So if a car is in a blind spot, that's that, that little light that shows up in your mirror uh, to warn you not to change lanes. And also a ventilated seats. Now, ventilated seats is nice because I have black leather and I sweat pretty easily. Um, I, get, I get hot in the summer pretty easily, so that it's a nice addition that I would have paid for extra if it was an option. But the six-speed manual option doesn't give you the choice of, a, uh, of an advanced package. Now, another thing I wish the car would have had was a third zone in the climate control. A lot of the basic cars now have dual climate control. And I feel like as a luxury car, you should at least give the back passengers a third option in terms of the, uh, uh, the heating and cooling settings. Uh, some cars have four zones. I mean, this is not an ultra luxury car, so maybe three zones could be a good balance. Another thing that I wish the car would have given me a choice was the ability to turn off the beeping sound if I accidentally close the door and being outside if the car's on. If you leave your engine on or if you leave the car in the accessories mode and you step outside the car, the car and you close the door, it will start beeping very loud for a few seconds and then stop to warn you that, hey, the car is still on. Uh, if I'm in, in the winter, if I'm brushing off the snow in the car, I would turn on the heat, leave the car, and then it would beep. The solution around that is to close the door part way so it doesn't fully shut to trigger that beeping, but I, you know, I wish there was an option to turn it off this car doesn't give you that option to do so. Speaking of option, there's no option to turn off the hill assist control. So the hill assist start will allow the car to apply the brakes just a little bit longer than usual as you're going uphill. Um, some cars allow you to, to disable that, this car does not. Another thing, there's no auto dimming side mirrors. The main uh, center mirror, the rear view mirror, 
in the car is uh, auto dimming but not the sides so that would have been a nice feature to have some cars have it but you know this one doesn't if you wanted to call someone you can do it by voice however it's not smart enough to read from the text to translate your voice to that text of the uh, person that you're trying to dial you have to store a voice tag so you basically record your voice saying that name and then it'll try to match it up next time you talk now this feature would be nice if the name is hard to pronounce or if it's some foreign name that is not really standard in English, but I think for your average name, like you know Joe or Jane, the car should be able to pick that up. While we're talking about voice searches, if you're trying to search a song by voice, you need like an iPod connected or an iPhone connected. If you have a regular uh, USB flash drive like I do, uh, you don't get the option of doing a voice search because um, for some reason or another, the engineers designed the car so that you need specific devices to enable the ID3 uh, searches by voice. And lastly, if you're trying to repeat a song, repeat a single track, uh, they make it hard for you to do it. It's actually one of the few things that are buried in a few levels of menus to get to. Um, but a workaround for that is to use the voice command to tell the car to repeat that single track. So there is a workaround, but I think it could have been better designed. Number four, ergonomics. Now, ergonomics is very important because you want to be comfortable while you're driving. So first off, the cup holders, that the, the way to design it is directly behind the shifter. So if you're shifting, I find that a lot of times you're bumping into the cups. I have a, a no drink rule in the car, minus water. Um, so a lot of times that's not a problem, but that's if you like your drinks, if you like your big gulps, that's a, that could be a problem. Another thing is that the windshield wipers and high beams uh, sticks on the side, the, the control sticks do not light up. Everything else lights up, but those two do not light up for whatever reason. So if it's dark, um, I know you do it by feel, but it would be nice to have the text lit up at night. Another thing is that the trunk and the gas buttons are too close. Now these are electronically controlled. Um, there are two buttons that are on the door, but they're directly next to each other and sometimes if you're not paying attention you can confuse the two so I wish they separated it a little bit more just so that you can feel them out before hitting the the button so you don't accidentally hit the wrong one and for this next one this is kind of debatable this is more personal preference um, the steering feels numb uh, it's very easy to turn the wheel which can be a good thing um, others I've heard said it was a bad thing because it's less, it's less feedback from the road um, you can pretty much steer with one finger if you really wanted to um, but the compared to other cars that have more of a mechanical feel, it feels more engaging versus this one, which feels more like a video game because it's too easy to turn the wheel right and left. And finally, last but not least, the rear. Now, the rear seats don't fold down. The TLX does, but why not this one? Uh, for some reason, they only have the ski pass through. So if you're buying some furniture and you want to fold down the seats, well, sorry, you're out of luck for this car. Another thing. The uh, rear seats are bolstered, which is nice, but then the middle seat is super high. So someone like, like me, I'm not the tallest guy in the world. I'm like almost touching the roof. The technology package is very nice. Um, it has the ELS 440 watt, 10 speaker surround sound. So it has a nice eight inch subwoofer in the back. Uh, as I said, total of 10 speakers and it's pretty good quality. The rear deck lid, the way they designed it, it it's prone to rattling. So if you're turning up your sub, and then you're hitting the deep base, you can start hearing some rattling between the deck and even some of the trunk lining as well. So I thought they could have done a little bit better job there, especially since this is a luxury car. You know, you, you expect that if you have a higher, higher end sound system in the car, that all the materials that are designed around it to prevent the rattling would be there. But for some reason, just I feel like kind of got skimped out on. And speaking about the trunk, if you're trying to load up luggage, you'll notice that the trunk floor is not even. The trunk is supposed to be a big place to hold your luggage, you know, in a family sedan that's practical, um, but it makes it difficult when you hit those back ridges with the luggage wheels. And finally, the uh, trunk and the C-pillars are kind of intrusive in terms of the rear visibility. Uh, the trunk is high, so you get, so you get less of a view to the uh, ground directly behind you. And then from right and left, the C-pillars are pretty thick. So if you're trying to view it that way, it's hard to see. So if they made it a little bit thinner, um, made the trunk a little bit lower, I guess the compromise would be less trunk space. It'll be a little bit easier to see.
And also, before we conclude this video, I would like to make note of some of the changes I've done after the car was purchased. So these are not factory options. First off, you may have spotted uh, some dash cams in the car. I have one in the front and one in the back. Those I've installed myself. You'll also notice the carbon fiber wraps that touch in the inside and outside of the car. That's done by me as well. I have aftermarket wheels. So these are 20 inch NK wheels with the Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires. Um, those are not factory. The factory ones are the 18 inch Michelin Pilot. Those are the all season tires versus the summer tires that I currently have on. As I mentioned, the LED projectors that illuminate the Acura logo that is aftermarket. Um, also, in the front of the car, I do have the switchback DRLs. Those are towards the bottom of the bumper. Those are aftermarket. As well as the regular DRLs that are doubled up as high beams. Those used to be incandescent lights, but now they're 5000K LEDs. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you find this video informative, especially if you're in the market for a used car. And if this convinced you to get a TL, great. If it convinces you that the TL is the wrong car, also great. I hope it brings you closer to your decision to see if this is the right car or not. If you're just watching it just to enjoy, I hope you enjoyed it. And also, I'll be making a video about the total cost of ownership. So I have to get some data together, organize the numbers. Um, once it's done, I'll put the video link right over here. And be sure to check it out and stay tuned. We'll see you next time. I mentioned this was fun to drive. <laughs>